Hello for lover and welcome to The Link Up. Today we've got a great episode in store for you. We're going to be chatting with an amazing special guest who works in the humanitarian sector. Her heart for our Polynesian people across the Pacific is huge and I have the maddest respect for her. We're also going to be talking about resilience and mindset shifts within the conversation. So I'm actually going to let her introduce herself. So... There you are. <laughs> thank you, Sha, and thank you for the invitation. Um, You're to come welcome. To your amazing show. Um, and talafa to our viewers out there. Uh, my name is Sahara Singh Anai. And like Sha said, I am a humanitarian uh, worker. And a lot of the work that I do is in the international space in the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Um, meeting you has been so inspirational. <laughs> And when you and I were talking off camera, you quoted this psalm on proverb. Could you share that with us and also what it means? Yeah, yeah. If a fool e lala mea, lala mea. Um, probably one of my favorite psalm on um, mm-hmm. that I constantly use on myself and everywhere I go. Um, but what it basically means, you know, for those who don't understand what that is, the alamea is a starfish right. um, that you find in the Pacific, mm. um, shallow water, so even in deep waters. Mm. And the top side of the starfish um, is very prickly and spiky. Right. So if you step on it, it's mm. quite poisonous mm-hmm. um, and you know, it could end your life. Right. But the bottom side of that starfish, you know, they have like these tentacle like suctions mm-hmm. and you just wherever it is that you pricked yourself mm-hmm. on, on the top side of it, right. you place the the bottom side of the starfish on it and it sucks out its own poison from your body. Oh, um, okay. So to say, if a four lala mea, lala mea, it's like the solution to this problem of the starfish mm. is within the starfish itself. Right. So very much similar, you know, in the community context or in your families and even within yourself, mm. you know, the solution to your problem is within yourself, mm. you know. And I guess we're really talking about then that it's in your own hands. It is. Pretty much. And if we're talking about something being in your own hands, we're talking about resilience. How do you see that in the spaces that you work in? Yeah. Um, you know, it's a lot of um, the works that we deliver to the communities. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are quite rural communities. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not to, it's not for us to say, uh, we are here to teach you resilience. Yeah. You know, we are <laughs> here to bring you solutions. Right. We are here to bring you all of these things that, mm-hmm. you know, you should have. Yeah. Um, because, you know, everything, every, every delivery that we do and in every project that we deliver, mm-hmm. all of this has been, um, designed and dictated by the communities themselves. They've right. identified what their problems are. They know what the solutions to these problems are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes they just need those extra people to bring in the tools yeah. um, and the right resources to just get things rolling, you know. Right. But communities themselves, um, and th- I speak especially for our Pacific people, mm-hmm. um, are one of the most resilient people that I know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think in terms of what you're saying about resilience and even it already being there in our hands when we do have outside organizations or outside systems that come into play yeah for our communities how do we i guess move forward in those spaces without i guess feeling like these people are like Riding You've come in on to their save savior, us. <laughs> on their white savior complex or yeah. white knight kind of, yeah. um, I guess, spaces that they yeah. come to us in. H- how do we look at things from yeah. that lens? Yeah. Good question. Without I mean, without feeling I know. like, excuse me, get come and save me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and and it's a really good question. And I think a lot of that, you know, and I speak for myself because I can't. You know, I can't speak for everybody else in the humanitarian yeah. space. Um, I can't speak for their values and their behaviors when mm. they go into these spaces. Right. Um, but I, I speak for myself, um, you know, when I say it should never be um, mm. in your space of thought or behavior or within your, you know, your, your principles and your mm. values to say that you're going there as that savior right. um, to save them. Um, you will... You know, you will be, well, I, I wasn't surprised at all, but, you know, you will come to appreciate that 
you will learn from our people mm. just as much as they're learning from you. Um, and you really need to be, you know, you really need to be in that um, sort of mindset mm. um, and very open in your heart to be able to to do something like that. I mean, if you go into a, into a space mm. and say, hey, Shah, I'm here to teach you something yes. <laughs> and not think that Shah has a lesson for me, mm. you know, that's you're being completely closed minded. Right. Um, and you're not doing yourself any favors. And I think it would also put up walls for the people that you're Absolutely. To and you know our people, like, right? Who's this bots person yeah. turning up? And you know to our tell people. How to live? Yeah. Like, and you know our people. Every single one of them are kings and queens. Like, mm, you don't come here and tell me what to do. <laughs> you know, so your, your, your approach has to be, you know, very participatory. Your approach mm -hmm. has to be, um, you know, a talanoa that. I'm not here to teach you, but I'm here to share with you. Yeah. You know, yeah. my experiences. So share with me yours. Sharing knowledge and, and learning it is. together. Yeah. As opposed to teaching you something. Yes. I mean, what is what are you to trying to coming say? Coming with they a never... title and trying to yeah. uh, establish something based on yeah. what you've done. Yeah. And it's like, well, what are you know, if you when you're going there and you say, I'm here to teach you something, it's like, well, what are you saying about uh, these people mm. that they don't know anything mm. you know and and you're not you're not expecting to receive any knowledge from their experiences right you know and i think even with the age that we live in now in terms of things like colonization and deconstruction a lot of people in terms of resilience will be like well why do we need what your systems have brought yeah. us your systems have brought us nothing but pain so why should we continue to yeah. listen to you and that subject is so broad i it mean is. when we talk about colonization and decolonization mm. depending on who you speak to depending on their experiences that they've had in that space you know mm. you have you'll have a different answer and you'll have a different feel and you'll have right. a different emotion you know from all of that but i think for us i think what we really need to do as pacifica people is appreciate where colonization has become a benefit. Hi. But we also need to remember that our culture is very much ingrained in us and there mm. is hybrid approaches that we can do to take advantage of, you know, um, these systems that are that that we have in place, these modern systems mm. that we have in place and our cultures. Right. You know, our cultural approaches as well. There is mm. there is hybrid and we can have strength in both. Absolutely. You know? I think even I was reading an article um, yesterday where I saw that um, a woman had done a study around obesity in Polynesian islands mm. and they're actually things that were bought from a Western perspective because th they were no longer living off the land, they were yeah. no longer eating um, food that was whole and yeah. grown and they worked hard for because a lot of this new stuff that was bought in have chemicals and and additives and yeah. all these other things that have actually uh not really helped because as voyagers we also have genes in us that allow our met metabolisms to be slower oh yeah because we had to survive those that's voyages. right we so had to we had to eat we, heaps of food for one so day that when you to live for the next things, three you, of no exactly. food <laughs> so it really does fascinate me that while i can understand a lot of these conversations around colonization or decolonization hmm. i think even in terms of resilience as a people as a Pacifica people what does that look like in terms of your experiences and what's that been like around yeah. the world that and the places that you've been yeah I mean our people you know have lived off the sea and the land mm. um you know from the times of our ancestors up to a certain point yeah um, where then purchasing food became a matter of convenience right um, and all that time that we have available now because we're able to purchase food rather than hunt and mm. fish for food mm. um, you know all that time was now used for something else which mm. is probably eating eating and more eating I right. don't know you know or cooking <laughs> yeah. like whatever you or know watching Netflix. or <laughs> you know, whatever eating. that and eating <laughs> you know whatever that might be um, but I wouldn't, you know, I think what we need to do is just to 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 remove remove power mm. from where we constantly 
point the finger to. Right. So if we keep saying, I blame colonization for the way we are, I blame right. colonization, I blame the, you know, the exportation or the importation of food mm. or and, and, you know, in our Pacific nations, mm. we do get the scraps that other developed countries right. don't want. Mm. Um, and that's what we eat mm. in the Pacific. You know, um, we really have to remove power from that. The fact is, we know it's there. Yeah. And we know that it exists. And if we keep saying that, 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 but we keep going to mm. that, 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 then and you're we're just now part of the problem. You're, you're part of it. Yes. Because you're so, now engaging with it and continuing it. Yeah. And when you yeah. have the choice and the power yeah. and the control to stop. Yeah. But I'm not just talking about food, right? Yes, I'm talking right. about the systems that are in place. Mm. I'm talking about every single thing that's in place because mm. of that. Um, and what I'm trying to, you know, what what I have experienced, mm. um, you know, um, throughout, you know, the 20 plus years of my career mm. um, and just being born a girl, yeah. <laughs> brown at that, working in, you know, in, in, in these Western countries and stuff yes. um, is just the shifting of mindset right. um, and just really knowing, um, you know, having that knowledge, being aware of it um, and then doing something about it. Mm. And not just sitting there blaming and just being a part of that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where resilience really comes in, is to be able to put into action mm. that awareness and the thought that you've given to yourself mm. that this is what is happening and I'm going to do something to counter that. Right. And so when you enter these spaces where you're meeting with these different Polynesian communities or East Asian communities, what has your approach to navigating and seeing their resilience grow well it depends because you know i work in vanuatu Mm -hmm. papua new guinea Mm -hmm. um in fiji samoa so and and in you know in cambodia so they do each community differs and funnily enough each community within that same country has different cultures themselves so you know um what resilience looks like really depends on what the challenges they have within those Mm -hmm. communities um that they you know that they've become aware that it exists but i think the common thing that exists in our pacific Mm -hmm. is the stresses that come with uh climate change or let's say our pacific is prone to cyclones um you know and and hurricanes and things mm. almost every single year, sometimes twice a year, mm. um, this happens. And, you you know, um, there's disruption to the way of life. Mm. There's destruction to homes. Right. Um, there's um, destruction to uh, food chains. Mm. Um, and then you've got very high level of stresses. Mm. Um, and, you know, what resilience looks like to me in communities in times like that is them being able to stand on their own two feet and say, this is what's happening and this is what we're going to do um, about it. And we're not going to wait for anybody else to come and kick this off for us. We're going to start so on this on our own. you're not relying on international aid? No. You're not relying on... Yes, I mean, those things can come later. Country yeah. come and scoop you yeah. out of the debt. Those things yeah. do come later and they do yeah. come later. But the fact Absolutely. is, is that they're not sitting there waiting for these things to arrive Mm. for them to start something Mm. you know they're starting on these things immediately they're starting on these things straight away you know yeah and they're not just sitting there helpless and reliant on someone else they're actually working within their communities yeah to actually yeah so resilience resilience really can also be defined to me can also be designed to self uh, defined as self-reliance right you know being able to depend on themselves mm. um, and having the confidence to do things themselves mm. before anything else external, you know, comes into into their communities for support and assistance. And you talked about mindset shifting and what that looks like in terms of resilience. When, in the spaces that you've been in, what does that mind shift entail? I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay. What I do know mm. is that before, you know, before colonization, right. I don't like that word, but, you know, let's, yep. okay. before any of that Excuse came that in, <laughs> before any of that stuff came in, right, mm. our ancestors were 
living on their own Mm -hmm. um, and they were independent. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, if if a cyclone was to hit, for example, there was no aid going in there to help them. They built from the, you know, from the ground up. Um, all they on their own. All over Every, again, yeah, like and everything. You know, you're mm-hmm. talking from their food systems to their homes to their communities mm-hmm. to you know, all of that. So there was always that kind of um, very community-like, collective-like mm-hmm. um, sort of movement yeah, um, and that they their had. Their own cultural and yeah. Polynesian ingenuity. Yeah, mm-hmm. and somewhere along the line, mm-hmm. we kind of lost that yeah. independence. Right. Um, and I don't want to blame colonization for removing that independence, mm-hmm. although I, I do acknowledge that it does play a part in yes. it. Um, but that's what, you know, the whole the whole drive of resilience to shift the mindset mm-hmm. is, you know, and I'm not using the word changing mindset. Well, mm-hmm. Change what? Yeah. Shifting it means the mindset is already there and it has been there since our ancestors. We just need to kind of shift it back there. Yeah. And you know? be reminded of it. Be reminded again. of it, you mm-hmm. know. Maybe we've bumped our heads and gone through amnesia of some sort to forget what those are, but they are there. Mm. Because trust me, something happens to our people and you see them stand together mm. and work together and yeah. you're like, well, where was that last week? You I know, know what I mean? Her. But that's the whole thing of resilience, isn't it? It's where you are able to snap back from difficulties quickly, but it also makes you stronger. Yeah. And I think, and it's all in the mindset, mm. you know. It's like, what what has made that mindset shift yeah. to make you do that? And every other day, mm. your mindset is in this mode of dependency on things, right. mode of dependency on systems, mm. on you know, on finances, on support, whatever that might be. But it's like you're looking everywhere else mm. to do that instead of, and not within. And see, I think within our Pacifica and our Polynesian cultures, uh, everyone has a role to play in the community. And when hardships come at us, I've always noticed that when we have good support networks, we're able to rise quickly together. Mm, Um, But I do realize not everyone has that. And obviously in the spaces you've been in, you help yeah. support in those ways. What does that look like? But, you know, um, in, in the nature of our, of our culture anyway, mm. in our Fasamoa, and I, and I believe this applies to many of the, of, yeah. of the, Pacific, Across the board. Pacific islands mm. that I worked in. Um, you know, there, it, there is, you, there is that, um, village setting mm. um, and you know what they say um, it takes a whole village to raise a child absolutely that's, that, that, that and that's really thing. true that's and were, my yeah. experiences I yeah. found that to be very so true it's, it does not necessarily have to be like a Samoan thing yeah. you know like it can be a Tongan thing mm. or a Vanuatu thing or a Fiji thing mm. you know but our community settings is very important to us and that support mm. system um, that we have in place is very important to us mm-hmm. I suppose that's why you know when we come into countries like mm. this and that support system kind of looks different. Mm. So it can come from winds, for example, um, and other, you know, other spaces right. that are, yes. that are there. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially in a financial can, sense. Yeah. And mm. it can, um, I don't know, depending on, you know, the type of family that you have, you can have that support from your family and such. Mm. Um, and, you know, this is not to disregard those support systems that are there in place, especially from your Ainga, mm. you know, but, the but it's like what they say hey there's there's no point of me trying to change you if you don't want to change yourself absolutely so that 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 the driver again really comes back to yourself yes and how much you're wanting to create shift within yourself Mm. um and to create changes within your life and to Mm. create um perspectives that are that are that are positive and empowering Mm. to your soul Mm. You know, um, and because regardless of, you know, the support that your family gives you, the amazing support that your family gives yeah. you, if you're not giving that to yourself, mm. then it's hopeless. And I find, especially being as I'm like New Zealand born, raised in Aotearoa, but also I grew up Samoan. So mm. I am very aware of my culture, but I can't speak my language or I speak it very poorly. I also understand it a bit, but not as much as I could. And then 
when I go to certain spaces, not being Samoan enough mm. or not being Kiwi enough, I've found that I've had to like really grow a backbone in knowing that <laughs> regardless of what people say, I'm yeah. still Samoan. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, I'm still Know Samoan. who you are. It is. And be confident in that narrative you give yourself. That mm. no matter who gives you their own narrative and their perspective of you, nothing changes how you feel about yourself. Mm. I can't. I can't really connect with you at the emotional level of being a, a Samoan born Kiwi because yeah. I was born and raised in Samoa. Right. But I can con- I understand because of my children. Mm. You know, for me, Samoan is my first language, Eng- English is my second. Right. My kids English is their first language yeah. and Samoan is like splashes. Right. <laughs> like, you know, just, yeah, I have like, splashes. <laughs> That's it. Malo, <laughs> you yeah. know, just little things. But mm. they can't string together words to form sentences. Right. You know, and that's because they were born and raised here. So mm. I do understand from that perspective. And then having to kind of go far and beyond that mm. to be accepted. You're not you're not Samoan enough. Mm. And you're not Palangi. You know, when you go to a Palangi yeah. community, uh, you're not yeah. Palangi <laughs> enough. You know, so it's like now you're stuck in yeah. the middle sort of thing. And even those um, are the types of things that I feel build resilience. Yeah. And it can bring you down. It mm. can bring you down if you talk yourself down and say, I don't belong here. I don't belong there. Yeah. You know, you have to, the positive talk really has to come from within. Mm. And the resilience really has to be built from within. Yes, absolutely. And I think... If nowadays I was talking to Hannah, one of our producers of, um, of, sh- of camera, and she was talking about how there's a lot of talk of resilience being a colonized mindset and that resilience isn't something that's real. But I don't necessarily agree with that because um, I where believe... Where does that narrative yeah, come from? I, exactly. I don't understand that? it. Because I'm like, we've been resilient people from the get-go. Like, you just need to look at our ancestors and look at the fact that they were voyagers. They were explorers. They were always looking for new land. They were always on the seas. Like, to navigate the seas is a huge deal, especially if you go and look at our ancient type of transportation on the seas like our wakas and our boats and ships like they are very different from yeah. western or eurocentric yeah. ones so i find that narrative incorrect mm. personally i'm interested to know who drew yeah, that narrative yeah I, I am too totally um, so yeah <laughs> when she when she mentioned that to me i was like really i know there are people who don't <laughs> believe that who think that yeah, who are these resilience <laughs> is a colonized thing. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. And I think for me, resilience is really important to a person um, because it allows you to actually keep moving forward because life's not fair and it can be really tough. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be able to get back up when things hit you. And for me, in terms of resilience, I find that when I ground myself in my faith and I take it back to my roots, I really am able to be bolstered in that area and actually come back up again and Mm. be ready to face the world again. Yeah. Mm. And people have different methods. You know, they have different ways of, uh, you know, really building that sort of self-confidence, you know, I mean, okay, resilience is the word for that. You know, mm-hmm. it could be. Um, and, you know, we, as Pacifica people, we do have our faith. Mm-hmm. We have our Christianity and our values as Christians that mm-hmm. we kind of, you know, um, plant ourselves in. Yeah. Um, and and, and, and that's, ki- that's kind of like the root of everything where we kind of, all right, I'm going back to my roots mm-hmm. and I'm going to think again of, you know, um, how I can get back back up and um yeah. you know address these issues and it looks different mm. um across the pacific but um you know because you've got you've got communities who may not have that same experience in terms of you know that kind of faith mm. but it's a different kind of faith right you know um the 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 common the common thing that i see though is taking care of the soul mm. taking care of what is within yeah um, because everything that you think of yourself drives your external self. Absolutely. You know, for us, it drives us to get out of bed mm. um, and go to work. It drives us to do things that we are doing for others. Mm. Um, and 
not not for ourselves mm. and you know with minimal time that we have so it's you know a lot of that kind of you know strength from within mm. drives our physical bodies to do that right um yeah and i like how we were talking before <laughs> about resilience and what that means for us as women um Woman is power. Yeah, and <laughs> let's elaborate more oh on that. Oh my gosh. Let's go back into that because I absolutely loved what you said to me before about that. And I think it's really important that people hear that because, like you said, woman and is power. And you know power. what? People don't need to hear it because they know it anyway. They do. And women but know this too. the reminder is good. It is. This is reviving. You know, this yes. is reminding yeah. something that they already know. That's I mean, already and they're probably there. They're probably listening to us and go, hey. You know, um, but some might hear us and say, yeah, yeah, you know, so whatever that might be. But, you know, our Pacifica women, they are the backbone of any community, any Absolutely. household, any family, you name it. The woman is the backbone of all yes, of that. I, we have 100% been, agree. I said to a friend, we were project managers from the day we were born, organizing mm -hmm. our siblings, organizing our families, mm -hmm. our parents, churches, committees, villages. <laughs> all the things. Every single thing, yeah. depending on the age. But you know what? Even if it was my age, I will have my, you know. 15 year old daughter yeah. running around doing these vows and everything else to exactly. get these things organized so she's mm. learning in the process and everything else mm. so you know for a woman a specific woman especially to sit there and goes oh i'm so weak i'm so mm. no yeah no you're not and like who told you that narrative who made you believe in that because mm. everything that we are has you know has it is has been building the kind of person that you are has made you yeah. has is you are so much stronger than you think yes, than, that, than, than you're giving yourself credit for mm. you know um and these are the things that um i want our 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 pacifica woman mm. girls you know female whatever that might be to to always remember yeah um and yeah probably doesn't help because you know even in our Samoan language they call the girls tupa vai vai which right. means like the weaker ones it's like I know. is that in and muscle biologically is yes. that in muscle <laughs> yeah okay i would agree with that but in everything else heck no yeah no 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 we're not mm. the weaker one and i think even like because you're such a strong woman and you are so confident in who you are what has it been like to deal with things like stereotyping gender sexism within your workspaces yeah. but even what has built your resilience to become who you are now yeah um, and that's something that i didn't just like uh, didn't I'm, happen overnight yeah <laughs> uh, you know i got a bed oh i'm experiencing this yeah. i'm gonna sh change my mind sh you yeah. know shift my mindset and then wake up in the morning i was like it's shifted you know <laughs> none of that stuff this right. is i'm talking about years mm. and years of training my mind right um and training myself mm. um to think positive talk positive mm. um and to build my confidence in who i am mm. um you know as an engineer yeah. in a very male domineering field mm. um it hasn't been an easy journey right um, and i've worked from the south pacific all the way to uh, you know New Zealand and Australia, for example. So that's a huge shift mm. from people of my kind, right. um, of culture, you know, similarities in all of that space to mm. something that was completely foreign to me. Mm. Um, so, and you know, I won't say what country because I have amazing friends from these countries, mm. but racism was there, stereotyping was there, talking mm. down was there, demeaning was there, um, mm. sexism was there. Um, and you know, everything, everything negative that you can think about mm. was there. And especially when in our culture, we're taught to be humble. Oh yeah. We have certain oh, yeah. cultural norms. Don't like, look people in the yeah. eyes if they're your superior, mm. you know, don't talk back to people mm. if they are your, you know, be and respectful. be respectful, mm. um, you know, and it, it, I was like that, mm. you know, I kept, I kept me, it was like being respectful to me mm. meant do not answer back. Even mm. if you know, right? Even if you feel like I have to, you, you know, have, I have the to solution really say something or you about have the this. right answer. It's yeah. like holding, holding, holding. Yeah, you know, um, and it, it, it's not something that's like you know you wake up overnight and you say yeah I'm going to change that and then you change it straight away. Mm. Um, you know these are things that 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 are um, that happens in drips. Yes, you know throughout throughout your your life, mm. and. I could have easily stopped and mm. said, oh, 
I'm not comfortable this is in too this. Hot. Yes. <laughs> this is too hot. You know, I'm being criticized. I'm getting more haters, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm more. I'm, I feel people like people care more that you're a woman. <laughs> I feel like more people are, you know, disrespecting me than they are respecting me. Mm. You know, I could have, I could have easily stopped right. and went back again and be subservient and mm. be quiet mm. and you know just not say and just say yes to everything. Mm. Um, or you could do what I had done. Just built that resilience and mm -hmm. kept moving forward. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said to my kids, you can always be respectful in the things that you say, especially if you object yeah. to those things. You do not necessarily have to speak volume. Mm -hmm. You do not, you don't have to, you know, to, to, to swear. Mm -hmm. You don't have to put in anything, any root. Any, you don't have to be You don't rude. have to attack them personally. That's right. Mm. You can be very respectful in the way you convey your message mm -hmm. and what you think is the mm -hmm. right thing. Um, and to and to correct something mm. that you that you hear and that you see right there and then, mm. have the courage to do that. Yeah. And I really urge you know, um, and I think a lot of our um, generation, the younger ones especially, mm. and I speak like because I've got you know a twenty four year old and then the teenagers, mm. um, and they are in that space where you know that that kind of culture you know, keeps coming in because we still have grandparents, right. you know, yeah. uh, around and great grandparents who yeah. have recently gone as well. So it's, um, it's just, it's finding that confidence in themselves and mm. being able to, but this is the hybrid approach that we right. were talking about before. Because you're taking Western. That's right. Um, models. That's and right. And you're using our Pacific The Western Earth. approach is, the Western approach is you speak if you have something in your mind mm -hmm. or if there's something that you are unhappy with, not our culture. Not at but all. Western culture, <laughs> yeah. yes. Yes. Our culture then is if, okay, if I'm going to speak that, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to be rude about it. I'm going right. to be very fa'alo alo. Yes. You know, and convey that message across. There's right. your hybrid. Right. You know, so it can it, all these hybrid approaches comes can come from the things that you say to the mm. things that you do. Mm. Awesome. So as we were talking about self-reliance, can you tell me a bit more about decolonized mindsets and what that has looked like in some of the spaces you've worked in? Yeah, probably one of the most um, amazing spaces that I'm working in is um, in rural communities where they're quite far from you know, these um, systems that are, you know, that governments have in place. And these, right. I mean, and, and who has set up these government systems, right? Mm. Um, you know, uh, so put that in the New Zealand context. I mean, let's talk about domestic violence in that space. Okay, yeah. Um, in New Zealand, we've got the safe houses, the, mm -hmm. you know, the... the, Support the, the lines. Line, the, yep. That's right, you know, those lines that you call, mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the police and everything else. You Signals you're aware there's of. There's different mm -hmm. types of authorities and different types of systems that are in place for you to do that. Right. So, so something very similar mm -hmm. um, exists in the Pacific as well, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Um, but if you're talking about... Because a lot of my work is in the rural communities, mm -hmm. right? Um, and... When domestic hap uh, domestic violence happens in these rural communities, mm. to reach those systems is a huge delay. Um, right. But they are reached, but there's a delay. Mm -hmm. And it could be detrimental. I mean, it could be that by the time the assistance gets to that place, it's too late. Right. Um, by the time the assistance gets to that place, it's already been, you know, like... De-escalated. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so what, we, what we're, you know, looking at the space of self-reliance and everything else... Mm. These communities already have committees right. that they set in place. And these could be from their church committees, mm -hmm. um, where they have the women's committees, mm. you know, for example. Um, so, um, you know, we're not coming in there to try and build anything new. It's right. just working with existing local village systems that they already have in place mm -hmm. and providing additional tools and resources for them. Mm to be able to address things like domestic violence that are right. happening within their communities. So, you know, um, and one of the biggest things that we've picked up as well is during cyclones, um, even pandemic, even right. during COVID, mm. there was a whole disconnect with communications. Mm. Transportation is a big no-no. You, you can't even get through, you know, if you're talking about a cyclone and hurricane and right. stuff. Um, and in times of disaster, what goes up? Stress. Stress. Mm. And what happens when that goes up? Ag aggression. Aggression, mm. you know? And the, this is happening not just to one family. This is now happening to multiple families Across within the these board. communities. Wow. That's right. Okay. So, and what are you going to do? You're going to wait for all of these families 
to try and reach the system mm. to get the assistance that's needed. Or, and, and this assistance is already being disconnected from these disasters. Right. Or do you build on the existing village system and say, you can do something about it mm. so that you can address this first and foremost. And then anything else that's outside of that can be, you know, can be referred to the yeah. system. So this is the hybrid approach. You know, you've got the Western systems that are already there. And then you've got your traditional systems that are already there. Mm. Marry the two. Right. And I think that's great in terms of marrying them, but obviously in in Polynesian perspectives where they're more patriarchal or even where sometimes we turn a blind eye to something that's become a cultural norm that can be detrimental to us, how do you help bring in the mindset shift or even allow someone to build resilience so that they actually can start speaking up for themselves. Like, are you talking about I guess in domestic violence yes, being I guess in, cultural norm? Well, I mean, I know Cause domestic no violence, violence is, like, like, it's not yeah. a cultural norm for anyone. Yeah, that's right. It's a anger issue. And, you know and, what? A, and just speaking of that too, like, the, the, the even the, the narrative mm. that it is normal for Pacific communities to be aggressive, mm. to have domestic violence. It's like, mm. who pushed that narrative right. through? I don't think it's in our culture to be that. You know, I mean, the, you've got, and because even in the Balangi culture, that happens when people right. are highly stressed, mm -hmm. there's aggression, and, you know, the, just people have different ways of dealing with it. Some hit mm. um, and, and get violent. Others walk away. Um, you know, others go for a swim. Others, whatever that might look like. Mm. Like, just, Different people have different approaches to what that is. Mm. But the narrative that's been pushed through, like, this is very normal in the Pacific community to be, mm. you know, to, to experience domestic violence and whatnot. I think we should just kind of, we, we should remove that. And I mean, I do agree that it it's not necessarily a cultural norm in that we accept it. But I have um, read articles around it where women have been in spaces where they've been more vulnerable or more unsafe and even if they did reach out they didn't necessarily get the help that they mm. needed how do how does your work i guess um enable that shift or that change so that people can actually grow and learn to deal with their stress and their aggression mm. in a way that isn't going to have such a detrimental impact on themselves or those around them. Yeah, and that's that's a really hard conversation to have. And you mm. know what? I mean, we're talking about a shifting mindset, right? Mm. And I could easily say to you, to shift your mindset. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, is this girl crazy? Mm. Like, why is she telling me stuff like this? So, you know, it's it's not... It's not like I could give you a definite answer and say, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the solution. Mm. And you know, Eureka. You know, and everyone and else. It's done. All the, yes. And all <laughs> the viewers are wild. We have you a know, genie around and before. just, you've got three wishes. It's yeah, fixed. <laughs> that's right. So, but, you know, it's like what you, you said before, mm. um, you know, in our village setting, in our in our family support and everything. I, so it's not so much just changing the mindset of one person. Mm. say like this person being the victim right it's about changing the mindset of the uh, shifting the mindset of the surround of the people around her mm. or him as well you know because domestic Cause violence can that's Absolutely. right mm. because if a uh, if if like say for example i was going through domestic violence and i lean out to my brothers and sisters for example and they and the and the feeling that i get is that it's my responsibility it was my fault mm. it was everything is like you deal on, with it on your I, own. Yes. Yeah. And that everything was my doing. Mm. And nothing about everything, you know, and what do you think? How how the do you think that will make me through. feel? Yeah. Like no matter how much I've been trained to shift my mindset or I've been, you know, no matter how many experiences that I've been through in, in the past that has created such resilience in me. Mm. But as soon as this happens, like all of that could collapse. You know because I mean? your support network is that's right not really supportive yeah yeah so it's not just change yeah that it's is not a just difficult mindset conversation about, on one person mm. you know it's with it's with everything else and i'm not i'm not saying this as a, a specialized psychologist right, or yeah. you know somebody who holds 
credentials in this area. They're like yeah. these are just life experiences that I'm speaking from. Mm. And these are, you know, uh, personal life experiences that I speak from mm. and experiences within the work that I do that mm. I speak from. Right. And it's not easy. It's not easy yeah. conversations to have one. And it's not easy solutions to have two. Yeah, especially but, if people are... Um, see the stuff they're going through from a lens of shame and embarrassment and they don't want to talk yeah. about it or you end up having a whole lot of people try and protect the person who is the aggressor. Yeah. So, yeah. They... But, you know, I mean, let's go back to our mm. yeah, to our proverb. Mm. The solution is in there. Exactly. Is in there. It's All within, the time. Right, okay. It's in you, it's in there, it's in your eye. It's in there. Wherever right. the problem is springing from, the solution is in there. Mm. Well, Sahara, that was a lot. And it was amazing hearing everything you were talking about, but even just engaging in these topics and hearing them from another brown woman of excellence. Um, so, yeah, before we wrap up, do you have some final thoughts around resilience and strength? Um, well, no, just supposed to thank you for the opportunity to come on here. Oh, um, it's been such a pleasure. You, yeah, thank you for the platform to, you know, share with our Pacific people um, and everyone else that's watching mm. um, and sharing with our viewers out there, um, you know, my, my lived experiences mm. um, and just, you know, some examples from um, the works that I do um, and yeah. the life that I've lived. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for Honestly, for it's that. been so inspirational. And even just hearing you talk about resilience, I know that in terms of uh, just as women navigating it and realizing it is in your hand and that you are already built for resilience, that no matter what comes your way, you actually can learn to stand up again and keep moving forward, yeah. that you have a lot of courage and strength that lives within you. And I think that's so key for us to remember as women because sometimes, especially nowadays, you can re get really bogged down by the news, by social yeah. media. And it's easy to forget. And it is. It's easy to, to be numb. Yeah, you know. and just r feel hopeless. Yeah. So, and then that becomes a norm to feel. Yeah. And so having these types of conversations are really encouraging and they're uplifting, but they also make you remember. Yeah. They remember that it's in your hands. Yeah. Like you are the solution to the problem yeah. within the problem. Yeah. And yeah. I absolutely love that. So thank you so much. Um, that was it for today. Um, wow, I'm still like processing everything we talked about but thank you so much for joining us um, if you have any questions or if you have any feedback you want to share with us email us at info at the link up .co .nz. otherwise we'll see you next week at the link up bye